This video addresses part of the fifth grade math standard of operations with decimals, specifically adding and subtracting decimals. Adding and subtracting decimals is actually very, very similar to adding and subtracting with whole numbers. All the processes are the same. There are just three steps you need to remember because there is a decimal point. First, line the numbers up by the decimal point. Second, fill in the gaps. Sometimes the decimal places don't match up. There are three in the top number and two in the bottom number, and so you need to put zeros in as placeholders to make sure every place value is accounted for in the decimals. Then three, add and subtract as normal. Simple as that. Okay, let's do some examples. First, I need to line them up at the decimal point. So I have eight and four tenths plus one and 37 hundredths. Notice how my decimal points are lined up. That allows all the place values will be lined up correctly. Next, I need to fill in the gap. Well, this is what I was talking about. Right here is a gap. There's a seven down here, but nothing above it. So we put a zero in as a placeholder. Now we can add like normal. Zero plus seven is seven. Four plus three is seven. And eight plus one is nine. Nine is 77 hundredths. Let's do another example. 64 and 37 hundredths plus 12. Hmm. Some of you have forgotten that if it's a whole number, there still is a decimal point. It happens to come right after the ones place. So I write 12, and there's my decimal point. I've lined up my decimal points. Now I need to fill in the gap. So I put a zero there. Now I have two decimal place values in the top number and two place values in the bottom number. I add them up. Seven plus zero is seven. Three plus zero is three. 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. Notice how I bring my decimal points straight down. What about subtraction? It works the exact same way. 13 and 76 hundredths minus 4 and 5 tenths. Well, what do we need to do next? That's right, fill in that gap. So there's a 6 here. I need to put a 0 underneath it. So I have the same number of decimal place values in both numbers. 6 minus 0 is 6. 7 minus 5 is 2. 3 minus 4, hmm, can't do that. I have to borrow. So the 1 becomes a 0, and the 3 becomes a 13. So 13 minus 4 is 9. I'm sure you spotted the mistake. I forgot to bring my decimal point all the way down. But what about carrying and borrowing? The good news is that the way you carry and borrow with decimals is exactly the same as how you carry and borrow with whole numbers. With whole numbers, we'd have 237 plus 16. 7 plus 6 is 13, so I carry the 1 up here because that's 110, and I have 3 down here. I still have 13, just the 1's up here, and the 3's down here. Then I can add the 10's column. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then 2 plus 0 is 2. So my answer is 253. Let's go over like, the decimal version. 23 and 7 tenths plus one and six tenths. Same digits as before. Let's see if we get the same digits afterwards. Seven plus six is 13. One, three. One plus three is four, plus one more is five. And then two plus zero is two. I have two, five, three over here, two, five, three over here. The exact same answer, just a different place for your decimal point. What about borrowing? Well, again, it's exactly the same. 183 minus 14. Can't do 3 minus 4, so the 8 becomes a 7. The 3 becomes a 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. 7 minus 1 is 6. And 1 minus 0 is 1. 169. Does it match the decimal version? 18 and 3 tenths minus 1 and 4 tenths. Again, can't do 3 minus 4, so I borrow from the 8. That becomes a 7. The 3 becomes a 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. 7 minus 1 is 6. 1 minus 0 is 1. 16 and 9 tenths. Same digits. Review borrowing with zeros. This can trip some people up, so I'm going to give you a strategy of how to approach it. 40 and 6 tenths minus 5 and 7 tenths. My decimal points lined up so I can go. 6 minus 7. I can't do that, so I'm going to borrow from the uh-oh. How do you borrow from a zero? Well, instead, here's my zero. Don't think of it as just zero. Think of it as 40. Borrow from the 40. 40 becomes 
39. And then I make the 6 into a 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. 3 minus nothing is 3. 34 9 tenths. All right, let's take a look at this one. 13 and 7 hundredths minus 4 and 8 tenths. Before I get started, I'm sure you're saying, fill in that gap. 7 minus 0 is 7. Uh oh, I can't do 0 minus 8, so I borrow from the 3. The 3 becomes a 2, and the 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. Uh oh, I can't do 2 minus 4, so I need to borrow again. 1 becomes a 0, 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. All right, let's take a look down here. 20 and 3 hundredths minus 6 and 9 tenths. I line up my decimal point. I need to fill in that gap. 3 minus 0 is 3. 0 minus 9, ah, I can't do that. Let me, let me borrow from the, uh-oh, I can't borrow from that either. The 20 becomes a 19, and the 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. 9 minus 6 is 3. 1 minus nothing is 1. Okay, last one. 8, and remember our decimal point is right after the 1's place if we need it, minus 2 and 64 hundredths. Now, this is where students make mistakes. A lot of students, if they don't fill in that gap, will just bring the 64 straight down. But remember, if we put our zeros in, now we need to focus on the decimal places. I can't do 0 minus 4, so I need to borrow next door. But I can't do that either. So instead of thinking of it as 0, think of this as 80. Borrow from my 80, it becomes 79. And that 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. 7 minus 2 is 5. The good news is, adding and subtracting with decimals is very much the same. But just be careful to line up those dots and fill in those gaps. 